Hi everyone! So to continue our exploration into all things Jung, in this video I'm going to talk about some of the terminology that you have definitely already encountered in your life, which goes to show that you actually know more about Jung than you realize. So if you've heard of the terms introvert or extrovert, of complexes or of synchronicity, those were all terms that were coined by Jung. And if you heard about the Myers-Briggs type indicator, the MBTI, that is based on Jung's typology. And even the 12-step program is based on Jung's process of individuation. And Jung actually helped create the whole process and the whole approach. So let's dive into each of these and see what they actually mean and how Jung came about to either coin them or be part of their development. So first thing, probably the most well-known terms that everyone for sure has encountered before are introvert and extrovert or introversion and extroversion. Jung was the first one to use these terms and with them he wanted to describe which orientation different people direct their psychic energy, their life energy. So for introverts, introverts are people who generally are more focused or direct their energy to their inner lives. That's why introverts tend to be so comfortable in their own company because they, have, they tend to have a very rich inner world, be highly creative, and there's a lot going on inside of them that they are very aware of. Now, extroverts are the opposite. Extroverts are people who focus their energy and their life energy into the outside world. So it's all about interacting with people, having experiences, interacting with the outer world. Now, as we know, these are not fixed things. Some people tend towards introversion, some people towards extroversion, but some people are around the middle as well. And sometimes in different situations or in different times of our lives, we can travel from one to the other. Now, the next term I'm going to talk about are complexes. Most of us have heard of the term complex. And this was actually also coined by Jung. In fact, he always preferred his psychology to be called complex psychology and we ended up calling it mostly analytical psychology anyways, but in a lot of his writing he still refers to it as complex psychology. So what are complexes? Complexes are a constellation of energy and factors that act on us, that can stick to us and act on us. So, for example, every time we have a traumatic situation or something in our lives, a situation in our lives that highly impacts us, we store all the elements of that experience into this constellation. So, everything that was happening to us, all the ways that we were reacting, all the emotions that it brought up, everything that it made us feel, it all gets constellated and it creates this very, very powerful ball of energy. That is the complex. And many of us will have experienced this before. We might be going through life and any time we encounter any situation that remotely reminds us of that original experience, this complex, this energy will act on us and it will completely take control of our consciousness. We will be a hundred percent convinced that we are actually going through that same experience, even though everything may indicate the contrary. We will create these bulletproof arguments to argue that we are in fact reliving what we lived in the past. So to use an example to clarify this a little bit, I can use a personal example. Um, so I was bullied in high school and that was a very, very difficult and painful experience. And thinking back on that experience, there were a lot of key factors that defined it. There was the feeling of being in a hostile environment, the feeling of being attacked, the feeling of aggression coming towards me, and also my own behaviors. The way I reacted was by shutting myself off, by isolating myself, by closing myself off from, from creating new connections because I felt so threatened. So this happened back there over 10 years ago. Now, it didn't stay there. It never stays there. Whenever in my life I encounter a situation that has 
one or multiple aspects that remind me of that, instantly the complex acts up and it's, it feels exactly like it felt over a decade ago. Now the thing about complexes is we are never going to get rid of them. They are just part of our human existence. We cannot eradicate them. What we can do is learn how to work with them. So eventually, with time and exploration and in doing this kind of work, you will be able to identify when a complex is acting on you and you will be able to stop its influence on you. Because the moment we bring something that is acting on us to consciousness, it loses its power. So the minute we become conscious that, oh wait, this is actually the complex speaking and actually the present situation is not the same as the one back there. I am in fact not a 16 year old in high school anymore and all of that. Then the complex dissolves. And this actually applies, as I mentioned, to pretty much all our unconscious behavior and patterns, which is why the analytical work is about integrating all these forces into consciousness. The same happens with projections. Projections, another term that you have probably learned, uh, heard as well. So the minute we become conscious of a project projection, it loses its power. We're not projecting anymore. We're only projecting as long as we're unaware that we're projecting. Now, another term is the term synchronicity. Most of us might have heard about this as well. This is a term that I find very, very beautiful. When we are aware of synchronicity and how much it happens around us, it shows us how much life is speaking to us. It refers to things that are happening in the collective unconscious, so happening on that level that we are all connected. In fact, on that level where we know everything is affecting everything else. Nothing is an isolated situation or scenario. Everything is connected. There are, in fact, no coincidences in our lives. An example of this that is very relatable, how often, for example, have you thought about someone and just the moment when you think about them, they text you and you're like, oh, wow, I've just been thinking about you. It happens to most of us, right? That is not a coincidence. That is actually because on a deeper level we are connected and we actually pick up thoughts and cues from, from around us and they influence how we understand and how we see the world. The more in tune we become with our own selves, the more sensitive we become to these cues, the more we see them happening and the more connected we feel to life in general, which is also the point of this whole work. Now, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the Myers-Briggs type indicator, the MBTI. The purpose of the Myers-Briggs is to make the theory of psychological types described by Jung understandable and useful in people's lives. So this is based on Jung's typology. Typology was Jung's theory of personality types and it was very, very beginning of his work, one of the first things that he worked on and, and developed. The thing about this though is when Jung put together his typology, his theory of typology, it was never meant to be used as a personality test. It was never meant to box people in. As I've mentioned before, Jung was very much against anything that boxes people in or reduces or creates fixed concepts or fixed ideas. This was used as a much more fluid thing that analysts could use in relation to their patients primarily. So the typology, just as the MBTI, is trying to figure out what are your strengths, what are your superior functions. Now the point is not to just know that these are your superior functions and that's it. The point is to work on the inferior function and creating a whole and balanced individual, a whole and balanced personality. Now the last thing I want to talk about, which most of us have probably heard of as well, is the 12-step program. 
most therapists do not realize that the 12 step program is not merely an antidote for addiction, but it is actually a guideline for a total personality transformation. Bill Wilson, the founder of Alcoholics Anonymous, was highly influenced by Jung and exchanged several letters with Jung at the time where he was developing the 12 steps and the whole AA program. In this correspondence, Jung wrote to Wilson that the cure for alcoholism would have to be a spiritual one, a power equal to the power of spiritus or spirits or alcohol. So there is direct link in terminology there as well. Jung was highly influenced by AA's success as well and actually gave Wilson complete and detailed instructions of how the group format should be developed further. So there you go. You probably already knew a lot more about Jung and analytical psychology than you were aware of.